be able to say I belong to a church. <clears throat> Just to have ordinances to tell us how we need to act and behave. I believe in that now. I believe it has to be in the kingdom. But the first catesis is, is the default of our Christianity. It's a default. It's not God's design. God's design is transformation. Not to start, but to be changed. Not to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but to be renewed. Not to come to a building, but to make my life habitable. To break old habits. So that I become a habitation for God's glory. That's what it's all about. It's not about belonging to a body. It's not about belonging to a church. You shouldn't be so excited to tell folks you go to church every Sunday. And, and God forbid you tell them you come on Wednesday. We don't have a serious faith. We're not serious. And we, we have a desire to comply with the very etymology of what it means to be a new creation person. We are a catesis people, which means that when I allow the Holy Spirit to do His perfect work in me, everything about me and connected to me has to go into an evolution. I go into a spiritual cocoon because there is a metamorphosis waiting on me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh boy. Amen. <laughs> but instead, instead, we prefer to be containers. I wrote, we, we were created to be conduits, not containers. God saved you because he wanted a flesh. Yeah. <coughs> Let me put it this way. God saved you because he wanted to have an access point. That's why we started at Genesis 28. That's why I talked about the ladder. That's why I talked about the gate. That's why I talked about the pillar. God saved you. He brought you out of that horrible pit. He put you on this rock because he wanted to have a channel in the earth, a conduit in the earth. He wanted to touch humanity. He wanted to touch your life. He wanted to touch the people connected to you. We always sit around complaining about our messed up families. <laughs> you were one of them. <laughs> Get serious about your transformation. You may not save all of them, but save somebody. <laughs> Be a living testimony of God's goodness. Mm -hmm. So we can transform our regions. Everybody crying out for revival. Revival's not coming. Amen. Because people haven't been touched yet. Right. We haven't been transformed. We've got folks sitting in churches for decades, man. And the message that they hear is not piercing their, their heart. There's no, you know what I'm saying? There's no conviction. Yeah, that's still a good word. Conviction. We got so educated, we don't believe conviction is enough. Mm -hmm. So we should go to churches and make us feel good. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Afterwards. Mm -hmm. The Bible says afterwards. Yeah. When I look at, the, at Isaiah 9, it says that what the kingdom that he's going to do is going to be with justice and judgment. Yeah. Then he said after that, uh -huh. the end of that thing, it's going to be peace. Yeah. I'm not looking for peace first. Right. <laughs> wow, come on. Yes. I'm looking for order. You yeah. see, I'm going to yeah. order it. With justice and judgment. I'm looking for order. I'm looking for all the jagged edges to be straight. Because that's what he told them when the voice was crying in the wilderness. There's a voice that uh, take high things and bring them down. Low things and bring them up. Crooked places and rough places and make them straight. That's the stuff I'm after. I'm not all after that, 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 ooh, that fabricated form of Christianity that y'all long for. I don't want it. They don't have no place for me. I have nothing in common with that form of religion. God never called us to hold on. Never been called to hold on. We've been called to take over. Yeah, yeah. We've been called to take over. Duck and hide and hide. Hide in the building. So we can be glad that how long we've been around and how long 
long this has been happening and, how, and the stuff you've been free from. Yeah. <laughs> but you haven't added anything to your life. We major on subtractions. We do. Where I don't go. What I don't do. I used to do. That's not enough. That's an incomplete gospel. Yes. Come on. Huh? Hosea said you a cake, a cake unturned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that scripture. It always comes in the back of my mind. It always kind of sneaks up on my screen. A cake unturned. How do you turn a cake? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You gotta what? Lift it. But they say you fifty fifty. One translation says you fifty fifty. You mixed up because your cake unturned. God never called us to be mixed up. Y'all understand what I'm, yeah. what I'm trying to tell you? Yeah. <laughs> See, we, we can't even get people on the same page in the building. When we look at the transformed regions, God, it ain't going to happen, man. We have no anthem in the building. We have no rally point, no reference point. We have nothing common in a building. We still have founding and buildings and institutions and ordinances. We can't Transverse out of a building. Yeah. 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 The apostolic. Mm -hmm. Christ the apostle. Mm -hmm. Wants to clear out the clutter in our heads. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to infuse the church. The catesis man. The man he formed for himself. The same, similar, and, and prefigure of what Adam was formed to do. Yeah. In the earth. Y'all know how we always say that. Fruitful. What? Multiply. What else? Replenish. What? Subdue and do what? Have dominion. And you know what that means when it says subdue and then have dominion? Rule over what? Rule over you. Yeah. Yeah. You subdue it, and then you become the lead dog. Yeah. Head honcho. Yeah. New chair. Yeah. So you tell a little ice in your life? Yeah. Somebody else here. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. Poverty? You don't live there anymore. Whatever it is, anything connected to the old you. Because behold, all things become new. Yes. Yeah. Not new things, but the things concerning you become new. Yeah. Yeah. God gives you a kianos, mm -hmm. a fresh look, a fresh mm -hmm. perspective, a fresh idea mm -hmm. concerning the things that are connected to you. Y'all got that? Yeah. And then it'll take place when God is formed in us. He wants to be born more in, in us. <laughs> oh, I just got so many things going on in my head. <laughs> Therefore, I can conclude, conclude this part. It is no accident. If he want to be formed in us, it is no accident that Christ after the flesh in his, per, in his personal body, which means in his first incarnation, came at the end of that age. And that Christ after the spirit in his many member comes at the end of this age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This truth is echoed a thousand times, but yet it's been only a faint memory in our hearts of hearts. Yeah. It's a faint memory. We we know it. On, and, and man, you have those good days where you can just feel like you just can overcome everything. I mean, am I right? Yeah. And that you, you're truly a oh, yeah. uh, 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 victorious one. Yeah. <laughs> it, but see, some of the stuff that we've shared in this teaching has been hidden beneath the human thought or reasoning. It's a treasure hidden in an earthen vessel whose light beams mm -hmm. are waiting to break forth out of our clay pitcher. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. 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 So we, we find ourselves at juxtaposition to one another between that which is God and that which is us. Mm -hmm. Who we used to be and who we're becoming. Mm -hmm. So they're in conflict. Mm -hmm. 
But God wants to bring us to a place of rest in Him. Where it won't be a conflict. Where religion won't have an input on you. Where you don't even become religious anymore. Amen. That's what He wants to do. He wants to, he wants to remove the vegetables of our old mentality that just wants to rest in our thinking, that wants to remind us from time to time how weak we are, how impotent we are, how incapable we are, how insufficient we are. But we, we know we, you know, the, we know that we have sufficiency in all things yeah. because we know in whom we trust. And, and we know that we believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask and think. But I, I'm telling you, we, we got to make sure that we don't allow ourselves to uh, become enamored with who we used to be. We're, we're no longer that man. We're no longer that woman. We're, we're not that person. And within your heart of hearts, I'm talking about. You, you, you know, it may want to show up from time to time, but ultimately that is not your true identity. The true identity is incorruptible. It's in you. And the, the Christ that you carry is looking for expression in the earth. That's why we got to eradicate these, these ideologies and these carnal believers, uh, uh, concepts and the things that we believe contrary to the kingdom of God. And God wants to bring us to a point where we begin to operate and do things on a whole other frequency. Tell your neighbor, we got to operate differently. See, because it's impossible to maximize the benefits that are available in our new birth if we continue to operate out of old resources. That's what we need to do. That's what instruction does. That's what teaching does. It releases, it activates new resources. You, you got new resources. You don't have to revert to old patterns. Those patterns are broken. You got to tell yourself that. You have a fresh start. You have a new opportunity. You got to tell yourself that. But if you never know what repentance is all about, because in order to receive the rule of a new kingdom, it's important that we first repent of the old kingdom. Yes. 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 I can't revert back to that. I can't go back to that stuff. I can't backstab and backslide. We'll be backsliding. <coughs> Amen. I can't go back to Egypt. I can't go to Egypt if God is bringing me into my promise. I can't long for the old days. It's a lying wonder. It wants to drain you of your strength. Your initiative, your creative ability. Yes. 